So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, um, uh, thank you. Uh, and I, I owe everyone here thanks on two levels. First of all, thank you for being here today. I, th I think there are about 350 organisations represented here today. Many of you uh, having signed the Armed Forces Covenant, Covenant, many of you are actually Gold Award holders. And that is an incredible testament to the huge amount of goodwill that we enjoy in the UK amongst uh, uh, business and the wider community for the armed forces. So thank you also, not just for being here today, but for what you do every day. Uh, every day supporting our reserve forces and cadets. And whether that's supporting those people in your organizations who are developing and providing unique experiences for the younger generation and the next generation of employees for your organization and mine but also those employees who are part of our reserve forces and uh, who are supporting military capability through the Maritime Army and Royal Air Force Reserve Forces. Now I think everyone here, no matter where you are in society, where, where you are in business, uh, we are all feeling that the world is changing and it's changing fast, faster than we are perhaps accustomed to. It's more turbulent, it's less secure. We've all watched the horrors on our television screen of the events in Ukraine over the past 12 or more months. Events which have had global impact. Global impact on business and global impact on society and global impact for our people. Um, it's interesting to note that the UK over the past year and the, and the Ministry of Defence has trained over 10,000 Ukrainian personnel in skills such as general infantry skills, supply chain, uh, engineering, and combat, combat med medicine, etc. Uh, but also interesting that actually the team that has been helping to support that training effort has included over 300 reserves. So the threat to the nation and our economy is real. Increasingly organized uh, and connected global organized crime uh, groups and state-supported organizations are threats which we contend with every day. And whether that is a threat in terms of cyber, whether it's a threat in terms of espionage, uh, whether that is a threat to defense or actually a threat to your businesses, uh, it is a threat which every day our reserves are absolutely part of the team which is protecting our nation and helping it prosper. And I've been Chief of Defence people for just about 10 weeks now, and I've taken the opportunity to get out and about as much as I can, to visit the armed forces, uh, to visit our civil servants, to see them in their places of work, uh, and to understand what they do. Uh, and actually, it was really interesting just two weeks ago to travel to Estonia, where we have uh, the King's Royal Hussars Battle Group, two squadrons of Challenger II tanks with support elements, uh, and also a detachment of Chinook helicopters from the Royal Air Force. Every element of that battle group contained uh, reserve personnel. And it was particularly interesting, actually, uh, as part of that visit to attend exercise Cyber Marvel. Uh, that's the largest cyber exercise in Europe this year that was taking place in Tallinn. It had a significant uh, UK contingent. Actually, the UK contingent was one of 11 nations that were taking part. And actually, the UK contingent had a significant proportion of reserves personnel. And one standout person in that visit was a young Royal Signals Corporal who briefed me on what he was doing, supporting the running of the exercise. He was actually providing the intelligence feed into that exercise as a Royal Signals Reserve Corporal. I said to him, what do you do when you're not in the reserves? And he said, I'm the, ch I'm the chief technology officer of a large organization, I wouldn't say who, a large organization based in London. And, and therefore, what is really clear is not only was the, the incredible skills that we managed to bring to our defense effort through harnessing the skills that exist in the wider business and, uh, and, and civilian community through the reserve forces, but also the skills and talking to him that he was picking up as part of that exercise, which he could take back into his daytime job. So, Many of you will be aware that next week uh, the Chancellor will be uh, standing up to set his budget. 
Um, and aligned with that, uh, and hopefully just as prominent, maybe not, uh, but hopefully just as prominent, will, will be actually the, uh, the, 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 uh, a piece of work called the Integrated Refu Re Review Refresh. And that is uh, Minister of Defence's opportunity just to update um, our Integrated Review of 2021 in light of some of the events that have taken place over the last uh, 12 months or so. Now, at the heart of our defence strategy, our people. And at the heart of our people is our vision to develop a more integrated, a more digitally enabled force. So reserves are absolutely key to that, that force. I see reserves having a more prominent part in that force. Whether it is through augmentation, like I saw with the King's Royal Hazards in Estonia, whether it is niche skills that we can tap from wider UK society, such as the young Royal Signals Corporal who I saw at Exercise Cyber Marvel, or whether it is the mass of, uh, of providing significant numbers of forces for, say, for uh, particularly the Army Reserve, which traditionally is what we see the reserves as for, particularly when we think back to the Cold War. This is one whole force that we are incre increasingly trying to develop of regulars, reserves, civil servants, and industry, and particularly industry within the defense e enterprise with greater flexibility for employees to move flexibly over a 40-year career uh, across the various employment boundaries, but contributing to the national defence effort. I also want to bring greater simplicity. For those of you who have experience of in, uh, interacting with defence uh, to help some of your reserves uh, in their work with defence, you have probably been incredibly frustrated at some of the policy and process that we put in your way and indeed your employees way. <clears throat> I want to remove all that, I want to get rid of the paper, I want to empower our people and your people to be part of one defence. So today I hope uh, and for those of you who have been to previous conferences we're going to open up the, the narrative a little bit today, uh, we're going to bring to life our view of how you and your people who are members of our uh, res reserves and cadets community uh, will play a vital part in developing that integrated force. Now, I look forward to meeting many of you over lunch and some of the breaks. Uh, please, uh, if, if there is anything I can do to help or you've any, got any great ideas, I'm always up, open to ideas, etc. Please come uh, and find me. I look forward to talking. Uh, but right now, uh, please thank you on behalf of me and on behalf of the Secretary of State for everything you do every day, and thank you for being here today. Thank you.